Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. As you guys can probably see in the background, I am in the mix of moving. So this will probably be my last video in my little office. So if you guys are new to the channel, please like, subscribe, and share. And what we're gonna be talking about today is hardening Active Directory. So if you guys are ready for it, let's get into it. All right, everyone. So here we are on my desktop now. So what I want to go over is 12 points for Active Directory hardening. So this checklist I came across on Hack the Box a long time ago, but I figured I just want to put together this video really quick because I think these points are so, so important and maybe people overlook them, right? I have, there's a few on here that I overlooked in the past when I put on my remediation report just to make sure that the client or whomever is making these necessary uh, security measures in their organization. Okay, so like it says, like I said, you know, what I would tell you is definitely take notes of this and you can just go to Google and just put, you know, Active Directory hardening checklist, hack the box, and you can probably come right to this. But I just wanna break this down a little bit and go through it. And I thought it was really, really critical and uh, important. So number one here is implement lockout policies to slow down the enumeration attempts. So definitely have like maybe three, three attempts lock out the account because now it, it, it blocks an attacker or it, it slows down the attacker from keeping that password spray going and having that user, you know, locked out. So, you know, they can't do anything with that account anymore. So limit, LDAP access, this reduces exposure with network exp uh, segmentation and also network access controls, right? Access controls. So in this case, when you're using LDAP, like lightweight directory access protocol, now we need to eliminate that if we're not utilizing it because we can leverage that as an attacker. So you definitely want to make sure you limit that access to whatever devices are on your network. So number three here is ensure uh, enforce sorry enforce strong password policies include minimum length so maybe your minimum the minimum length would be 16 to 20 characters and what is this telling me this is saying okay let's move instead of moving instead of using a word let's use a phrase right like i love to penetrate or i love penetration testing it's the best something like that instead of saying penetration testing right instead of using just a word or pen testing or whatever you want to use and uh, you're gonna use a passphrase or use a password manager that obviously would be the best bet. But you know, if you wanna remember that password, try to use something that you can remember as well. So number four here is use MFA. So make it challenging for the attackers to gain unauthorized access with an extra layer of security. Obviously, MFA is definitely really, really critical. You can use Duo, there's, uh, you know, there's so many different MFA uh, applications out there, Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, etc. So that's definitely a way to uh, minimize those attackers on your AD en environment. So the next one here is enable LDAP signing and channel binding, right? This will protect you against man in the middle attacks and reduce that risk of unauthor uh, unauthorized access to service accounts. Okay, want to make sure you don't have access to those service accounts because as an attacker, as a pen tester, it's a Christmas gift for us. So we can use group management service accounts, also known as GMA. That's a tongue twister, GMSAs. All right, so this will provide automatically password management and help mitigate the risk of password hash exposure. Obviously having that contained so you don't have that exposed. So that's a, definitely a, another one that you can harden, another one to use to harden your network. All right, my back is killing me. But number seven here is something that, it should be across the board, but enable PAM, privilege access management. So what is this doing, right? This limits the exposure of privileged cr uh, credentials and reduce the attack surface for Kerberosing. Okay, so this definitely use a PAM solution if you can. If you're a small organization, obviously you have to do what you gotta do. So also you can use secure ADCS configuration. So this is for certificates. 
So restricting certificate templates to necessary permissions and limiting the certificate users uh, can be requested. And my phone is ringing. One second, let me just make sure it's no one really important. It's probably a spam call. So that's that one, that's number eight. So number nine here is embrace the principle of least privilege. This is something I think a lot of people don't do just for the, especially like a sysadmin. You know, say for example, me and Bob want to get access to a folder and me, I wanna have higher privileges because I don't know, you, I think I'm, I'm higher on the totem pole than, you know, Bob. But now Bob needs to access something. So pretty much it's reducing the risk of unauthorized uh, certificate requests by gaining, uh, granting users, granting computers, service accounts with minimum privileges needed to perform tasks. That's pretty much what it is. It's it's not very, you know, nowadays it's getting a little better. Um, but when I was a sysadmin, we didn't really care about that. We just did whatever we had to do to make sure the users had their stuff and get them off the phone. That's the God honest truth. Okay, so number 10 here is audit your ADCS setup. So periodically check your misconfigurations and potential vulnerabilities that can be exposed, right? And can be exploited because if you don't check this or you don't audit your own stuff, when the pen testers come, they're gonna audit it for you and they're gonna light you up like a Christmas tree. So you just wanna make sure you can have those uh, preliminary stuff and you can be proactive, okay? So monitor issued certificates. This is another good one. And this is one of the ones that I've skipped, to be honest, I like to be transparent. And keep track of issued certificates and their associated permissions, okay? And the last one here, which I thought was really, really cool, is implement security monitoring and alerting. So set up alerts for suspicious activities such as unauthorized uh, access or requests, the uh, the use of known DC sync related tools, unusual co unusual Cobros ticket requests, and the use of golden ticket related tools like Mimikatz. Mimikatz is pretty much like a credential stealer, which that's pretty much it for this video. And I think this is super super cool. Like if you want to ch obviously check out more on Hack the Box, obviously there's you know. 15 important tools for Active Directory. If you want to learn how to use these tools, there's probably associated like Bloodhound to enumerate AD and pack it and all the good stuff. So I really, really, really think this, this list is really cool. So if you have any questions about the list, throw it in the comments. If any of these, you know, help you in your journey as a blue teamer, as a sysadmin, then you can implement these to, you know, mitigate those problems from the pen testers or a adversary or an attacker. Let me know. So again, thank you so much for being a supporter, subscriber, you know, whatever. Please don't forget to subscribe. We we are growing by the day and I'm I'm really, really grateful for that. And I'm really gonna miss this office. So look, look, I'll see you guys in the next one and in the new office soon. Thank you.